All right, guys, on today's video, we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, something that I think everyone that spends time in the outdoors needs to know about, and that is knives. We are gonna take a look at some of the knives that you may have seen in some of my previous videos. I'm gonna talk about why I use those knives, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. I'm gonna talk about what I carry every single day and why. So with that, let's get started. That's just for effect. I don't really carry it there. And last but not least, the one that everybody wants to know about, what's it gonna be? Bam! The Parang. I got a lot of questions about this thing. In fact, this is what spurred this whole video. Got so many questions about this thing during my last Penobscot bow building video. So we're gonna take a look at this and all the rest of them. I'm also going to give you a few tips on sharpening these things because I did get a lot of comments on how I sharpen the parang here, how I keep things sharp. So we're going to talk about that uh, at the end of this video. But we're just going to kind of work our way through these things. Uh, we've got uh, some folders, got a multi-tool here, fixed blades, and then of course the big parang. So I think what I'm going to do is just start here at the multi-tool, the Leatherman, because that's what, if you've watched my videos for very long, I'm sure you've seen me using this thing and abusing this thing. So we'll start with that and then we'll just kind of work our way through some of the other knives that you've probably seen in some of the videos. So Leatherman P4, this is the exact tool that I took on alone, spent 74 days living in the bush in British Columbia. Absolutely love this multi-tool. There's two things that set this apart from every other multi-tool that I've ever used. One of them is one-handed operation. I can take this thing, it's got a magnet in it. I can take this and with one hand open it very easily. When you're working on stuff by yourself and you've got a hold to something, that feature is very, very handy. The other thing that sets this apart is it is built heavy. It's heavy duty and I have abused this thing. Now I did break the locking mechanism on my blade here and I've yet to send it in to get that fixed. I'm gonna do that one of these days. Just haven't done it. But I was batoning a, a piece of wood. It was actually batoning a piece of knotted heartwood which is way too hard to be batoning with this thing. Since then, many of you have made the suggestion for something I never even considered but that's batoning using a, a folder like this, but batoning it with the blade not locked in. Makes perfect sense. It takes all the stress off of that uh, joint right there, but just put it on the wood, tap it like this, and then if you need to, you can lock it out and do your twist or whatever you need to. So keep that in mind. Um, I like this thing because I use the knife, the pliers, and the wire cutters I use very often and the screwdrivers I use quite a bit. And believe it or not, the scissors on this thing come in very handy as well. You can trim your fingernails with them, trim your mustache so you don't chew it on your mustache when you're eating a burger or a deer leg. Uh, the saw I like. Anyway, I'm not gonna talk about this anymore because I did a full video review on it. I will, uh, I'll link to that up here somewhere it's gonna be up here also I'll link to it in the video description so you can see a full review of the p4 and I compare it I think I compare it to the rebar all right so another knife that I used in a recent video where I was building a kayak is the Mora so this is the Mora carbon um, this is the first Mora that I've ever had and I was totally impressed with how durable this thing is i was con before i started this build i was absolutely convinced that i was going to break this knife and it just held up like a champ to everything i could throw at it i was hammering it into logs twisting i was batoning it i was splitting pieces of wood i could not break this thing um, it's a very lightweight it's an inexpensive knife um, I've had knives that have held an edge a little bit better, 
but it's always a trade-off you know if you have a knife that holds an edge super well it can be very difficult to sharpen if you have a knife that's really easy to sharpen normally it doesn't hold an edge as well as one that's a little bit harder so it's always a trade-off and it's just personal preference what you like but i think overall this mora knife is jam up i mean if you're just getting into outdoor stuff bushcraft survival I don't think you could go wrong with one of these things. I think they're less than 15 bucks. Um, but all this stuff, I'll, li I'll put links down in the video description. So as far as like general around the camp type stuff, this is great. It's good for cutting lines, good for carving, general bushcraft stuff. It's not gonna be the best skinning knife. If you're into hunting and you're looking for something to skin big game, not gonna be great for that, but it can still work. I have skinned animals with this. And the reason I don't, like it as good as some of the other knives that I'll show you here for skinning is because the point is super fine and long and ideally for a skinning knife you want a little bit more of a radius right here on the end of it so you can get in there and make your cuts and not poke holes in the hide especially if you want to keep the hide for some other projects. So here's a knife that you might not have seen before. This is a knife that I keep in my pack. I've got a little bag of game bags that I put meat in when I'm out hunting. So I'm out hunting, I take an animal, quarter it out, put it in the meat bags, and then hang it up in the tree. And this little knife goes in that bag. This is a great little knife. It's made by Argali, my buddy Brad over there. And it's super lightweight, and it's great for caping and skinning animals. And I just throw it right in the bag with all of my game bags. Now this is not a knife that you're going to want to be doing heavy duty survival, bushcraft. You know, you're not going to be wanting to baton this thing and split firewood with it. This, is, this knife has a very specific use and a specific purpose and that is that caping and skinning. But when it comes to that, this knife really shines. All right, and so your typical fixed blade knife. This was made by Tyler Wilkins, and he sent me this, and I, I, you may have seen this knife in a video I did where I was building a fire with nothing but a knife and a boot lace. Um, I like this, it's very well built, it's very comfortable, I like, the amount of radius that I've got on the blade, the depth of the blade, this is a great skinning knife. It's also pretty doggone durable. The, uh, the spine on this knife is mm, probably an eighth of an inch, so it's gonna stand up pretty well to some pretty heavy duty abuse. Now you're not gonna be wanting to use this knife to like dig in and, and like use it as a screwdriver or something like that because the tip is very fine. It's not a bushcraft knife like the mora is so you can see there the difference in the the blade shapes for a general bushcraft type of a knife and a knife that's more geared towards hunting or skinning critters also you can see the the blade on this bushcraft knife is pretty thick all the way up to the tip whereas the skinning knife gets pretty thin down here at the end but as far as an all-around fixed blade sheath knife. I like this one. I like those drop point knives. And again, like I said, the, the radius on this blade and the depth of the blade comes in very handy when you're breaking down an animal or taking the hide off of an animal. So let's talk about our little folding knife here. I don't own very many folding knives, but this is one of them. And this is one of them that I really, really like. I think the model of this, so this is a Benchmade, I think the model is a bug out. Super, super lightweight, opens with one hand, closes with one hand, it's got this little spring loaded mechanism here. Really, really nice knife. I also like the orientation of this pocket clip, because when you stick it in your pocket and you pull it out, it's in the right position to open. Some of the other knives have the clip coming down this way. And so when you pull it out of your pocket, you have to then flip it around, which is inconvenient. 
So this little Benchmade would make a great EDC. It's super lightweight, very thin, very low profile. Put this in your pocket, you'd never know it's there. Again, that one-handed operation is very nice. Now, the cons to pretty much all folding knives is they're just not gonna be quite as robust as a good full tang fixed blade. Uh, but with that said, if you're not planning on batoning wood and things like that, these things are great. I like the depth of the blade, the, the radius on the blade. This would make a pretty good skinning knife. And again, it's very lightweight. You could throw this in your hunting pack and just use it for your skin and knife and you wouldn't even know it's there until you need it. As far as like a full on uh, survival bushcraft type of knife, this probably isn't gonna be the best bet because it's just not gonna hold up to the abuse that you're gonna need to put it through in those type of situations. But for an EDC or for something to throw in your hunting pack, uh, is this is gonna be a great, great option. All right, so let's move on to the Parang here. This is something that I had a lot of questions about in my, my last uh, bow building video. People really like this thing. So this one is made by Condor and it's a heavy duty uh, blade. The back, the spine here is probably 3 16 thick and you can really get some momentum and chopping power with this knife. Uh, you saw me in that video using this thing as a scraper to scrape those, uh, that, those bow limbs and the edge held up very well for a relatively inexpensive blade like this. I was actually very impressed with how well the blade held up. Now I got a lot of questions about how often I had to sharpen this knife during that build and believe it or not I did not sharpen this knife at all. Now again I have no affiliation with Condor. They're not, they're not sponsoring these videos in any way or paying me any money. Uh, I just happened to have this blade, so I figured yeah, I would use it for a build. There was a lot of interest in it, and I was pretty impressed with how well it held up. So this is not something that I'm gonna typically be carrying around with me all the time, but for something to keep in the truck, keep in the boat, the canoe, uh, to throw in your pack if you're going into the woods for a specific reason, some sort of bushcraft or survival project or survival challenge. I think this would be a pretty doggone good choice. You can split firewood with it. You can do some pretty heavy duty construction with this thing. You can beat the fire out of it with another, with a baton or something like that. Um, and you can actually do some pretty fine carving work with this thing if you have the right techniques. So now that we've gone over all these knives, I wanna talk about the one, the one that I carry every single day. Now, before I launch into that, I wanna make sure that you understand that my criteria for my everyday carry is probably different than your criteria. So the knife that I choose to carry every single day may or may not be the right knife for you. Maybe any of these knives are gonna be the right knife for you depending on what you need that knife to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, without further ado, my choice for my EDC, hands down, has got to be my Leatherman P4. Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there that hate on multi-tools. They preach about fixed blade, full tang knives. Fixed blade, full tang knives are great. Absolutely, they're bomb proof. They don't cut wire very well. They don't turn screws very well. They don't pinch things very well and hold them. All of those things a Leatherman does. And that's the exact reason that I carry this P4 every single day is because there's no telling what I'm gonna be doing. I use the pliers, the, the knife blade, the wire cutters, the screwdrivers. I even use the saw and the scissors on these things almost on a daily basis. And it's hard to beat the versatility of one of these things. As far as the usefulness of the blade, it's not gonna be the greatest blade for skinning and quartering an animal. It's got a very fine tip. You can do it, but there's other blades that are better, like a fixed blade like this with a nice radius on it and a deep blade. But as far as just an overall very useful 
versatile tool, it's gotta be the P4 for me. All right, so let's talk about sharpening. So what I've been using recently is this little gizmo here from WorkSharp. It's got two different uh, grits of diamond stone on it. I guess that's diamond stone. Anyway, two different grits of honing stone, a coarse grit, a fine grit. It's got a ceramic right here. And then it's got a little piece of leather uh, for stropping the blades. If you're not familiar with what stropping does, stropping basically aligns the steel on the cutting edge of the blade so that you get a finer edge. Now, when I'm using a knife, uh, skinning an animal, doing some sort of bushcraft or carving or something like that, a lot of times to get that knife back to a shaving edge, all you have to do is strop that blade. You don't have to sharpen it on a stone again. You just need to strop it, which realigns that very fine cutting edge on those knives. The rough side right here, the only time I'm ever gonna use that is if I've got a blade that's just really dull and I need to basically re-grind that cutting edge. Most of the time I'm gonna use just the, uh, the fine side here. But for this parang, it got a pretty heavy duty workout when I was doing that last video. I haven't sharpened it since then. And so I'm just gonna go over this relatively lightly with that uh, rough side just put a nice clean edge on it. I'll clean it up with the finer side and then we'll see if we can't get this thing shaven sharp. Now with bigger blades like this, oftentimes what I'll do is just lay the blade down and actually use the honing stone and move that instead of moving the knife against the stone. So again, the most important part of this whole process is maintaining a constant angle between the stone and the blade that you're trying to sharpen. If you're changing bevels like this, you're never gonna get it to the sharpness that you want. Now what I'm feeling for is on the bottom edge, I wanna feel just a light little burr and I can feel that all the way up and down this blade. So now I'm ready to come to the other side and do the same thing. So I've pushed that burr to the other side. Now I'm just gonna take my fine side That's getting there. I'll just go over it with the ceramic. That's getting keen. And we'll just, for the heck of it, run over our dropping pad. Now that is a quality edge. Anybody out there can get a, a decently made blade shaving sharp as long as you've got the right techniques. You don't have to have a super expensive stone. You know, this work sharp tool is very nice. You've got all the stuff that you need right there on it. But I've taken uh, broadheads and got them shaving sharp with nothing but a flat bastard file. So you don't have to have expensive tools. You can do it with a log with a little bit of clay smeared in the end of it. And I got called BS on that last time, but that's true. It's absolutely true. You can make a knife shaving sharp with nothing but a stick and some mud rubbed on it. 
um, as long as you've got the right technique and you hold that constant bevel. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed it, picked up something, and we will see you on the next one. We're uh, just about getting ready to head back into the mountains for a couple days, so hopefully we've got some good adventures uh, and uh, some stories to tell when we get back, but we will see y'all on the next one. So if you're looking at my friend back there, that is a foam target. That is not a real deer. I got so many comments about that on my 10 items video that I did for alone, where I was going over my 10 items. Everybody was like, hey, look at the deer back there. It's not a real deer. It's